Today we're brewing a double hazy IPA. You know what? It's a special day since this is my first brew day at my new spot in Knoxville, Tennessee. I've been out here for almost a month and I've had sex over a thousand times. Four of those times were with your dad. So stick around if you're in the market to learn some cool stuff. How to make hazy IPAs, how to save money, how to create DIY chillers, how to party with chicks, how to babysit a dog, how to feed a stray cat, how to never be this guy, how to show up to places uninvited, how to see what I look like without a beard. Double chin city, baby. When it comes down to it, Life is pretty simple. You either get busy brewing or get busy dying. We are rocking out in downtown Knoxville tonight, Brages and Bragettes. So crack a beer, take off your shirt, cup your junk, and let's get into it. What is going on guys? It's CH from Homebrew for Life here with our first grain to glass video since I violated my parole by leaving California. We got a lot going on today. I moved out here pretty much with just a claw hammer kettle, a grain basket, and an ink bird. Huge shout out to Todd from Northern Brewer for throwing me a ton of equipment to get this channel going consistently again. Big shout out to the claw hammer boys for sending me some toys as well. I was out in Nashville last weekend shooting with those guys, but I can't talk about that video. You gotta subscribe to their channel. But I'll tell you what, Kyle, my rash is healing up well and the cold sore is almost gone. Cheers. But in the meantime, let's get this brew going. Okay, first things first, we gotta put a system together. Now my entire house is electricity. There's no gas here. And this is my first electric stove. And this thing sucks, even when you're just cooking food. So we're gonna use this new burner to get our mash going. And usually I do four gallons of strike water for every five gallon batch. But today we're just gonna start with seven gallons. As for the water profile, just drinking water from Kroger, Freddy Kroger. And if you're in the market to see grown adults go grocery shopping with pajamas on when it's not nighttime or morning, check out the Kroger in North Knoxville. But after not being able to figure out this new burner for 30 minutes we're back to electricity all right so we just tried the new burner out there we couldn't get it to work uh it looked dangerous as hell we were having a flame that was kicking out towards our faces from the second regulator i don't know why there's two regulators on there so we're back inside we're using electricity but we've got two sources we've got the oven right here which is going to take forever but we also have the ink bird sous vide up here so we have to, I think this is a thousand watts. So we're hitting it from high, we're hitting it from low, and this should speed up the process when you're going electric. Clawhammer did send me some goodies though, but I have not connected it yet. But in the next video, I'm going to have three heating elements going on. Let me know if that's a good idea or if it's some fire marshal bill shit. They also sent me a chiller, but I don't have a hose right now. But it's all good, because I set up a GoFundMe. This is my buddy Daniel, AKA Dan. <laughs> We were roommates in college. He's from Los Angeles, and surprisingly, he got into homebrewing a couple years ago, and now he's out here visiting me. How's the hangover? Not good. Still with you? It's lingering. Luckily, we tracked down a homebrew store in South Knoxville, only four miles from my house. Four miles is actually pretty far in Knoxville, since everything is so small compared to San Diego. And this store has everything we need. All the good homebrew stores I used to go to in San Diego went out of business, and they're just getting more and more scarce. So any homebrew store is a good homebrew store. We're making a double hazy IPA today and we are not gonna bring it to a boil. No particular reason, I've just never done it. Let's stay optimistic. We're shooting for an 8% beer. That stuff. You up like Percocet. When it comes to malt bills for hazies, it's extremely important. We're gonna go with 10 pounds of two row and five pounds of flaked oats. That is a lot of flaked oats. Typically you want around a 70-30 ratio with base malts to flaked oats. Now as far as the hops go, Simcoe and Mosaic. Two of the best and most accessible hops to come by. And then Vosquik dry yeast which has been my go-to for the past year we started the brew day late and this is not the best course of action but we are staying optimistic this is a two by four we're using because i'm an idiot and we should have used the oven tray right here it's okay to get as close to overflow with your mash in because when you pull out the grain basket, it's gonna go down to about half. Then you can bring it to a boil if you were to boil. When we're getting close to boil, call 205. Time to get our one ounces of mosaic going. We got this hop strainer. But here's a trick. If you have a big sink like this, you can chill it right here. So fill up your sink with ice water. Never pay for ice. That's the first rule of home brewing. Actually, that's the second rule. The first rule is to always be chill no matter what. Big shout out to the barrage, Chris Vodka. Chris Absolute Vodka the barrage from Nebraska who told us he's broken his sink doing it this way so we're gonna do it exactly this way except we're gonna put some wood underneath the sink 
I love chilling it this way. You don't have to have your water on for 20 minutes running. And keep in mind, the faster you stir, the colder it gets, just like Top Ramen, baby. If you watch my channel, you know my favorite hack, food grade sous vide magnets for dry hopping without oxygen. And I don't wanna hear about it in the comment section anymore. People always say it falls in. It's cause you're putting too much weight on it. No more than 1.5 ounces of hops and squeeze the bag to remove all the star sand solution. Water weighs a ton. If you wanna dry hop with more than that, get another set of magnets. We pitched the yeast at 125 and that's the hottest I've ever done before. Stay optimistic. Stash your OG gravity at room temp and let it cool down before you read it properly. Hit the town and do a victory lap. And by victory lap, I mean eat good, drink good, catch some live tunes, catch some rays, skies out, thighs out, get the clanks going. Guys, I hate doing this, but this keeps me from becoming a part-time Uber driver. I got 29 sick kids at home that actually don't exist. Final offer. You buy a t-shirt, come over to your house and I'll suck all over your <laughs> Check on it next day and what do we got? No airlock activity. Every brewer's worst nightmare. Time to shake up the fermenter, give it another day, check it after day two and no activity again. You know what, we're done staying optimistic. All right, you wanna know what? I'm, I'm throwing this batch of beer out. The gravity was low. I was getting way too comfortable pitching the yeast hot. I'd pitch it at 100, and then I'd pitch it at 110, I'd pitch it at 110, I'd pitch it at 115, I got away with it. And this 125 is the cutoff. I've read online, you could do 140. I'm never doing that ever again. It finally caught up to me. Maybe I'll change the title of this video, how to bring a batch of beer back to life. Just treat it just like a kettle sour. Bring it back to 180 degrees Fahrenheit. No bacteria can survive over 180 degrees. Chill it and repitch yeast. A couple of years ago, I would have done that. And I come back on YouTube and be like, this is the best beer ever. But, but I've got nothing to gain by hyping up my beer on YouTube. Don't do a no boil high ABV beer. You're gonna use a ton of grain. That was dumb. Original gravity was 1030. I need to get my own mill. I'm pretty particular how my grain is milled. I crush it down more than most because I do brew in a bag and you can't get a stuck mash. But I will do a pre-boil gravity reading next video. The power in the house went out twice just from using that little skill saw, little $30 skill saw on Amazon. We started the brew day late, but ultimately I pitched the yeast too high. I was just getting too lazy with my execution. I've always said if you have a good system dialed in with good methods and execution, the recipe will take care of itself. We did it backwards today and it bit me in the ass. I did not have my system dialed in, but this is a learning experience. I'm not knocking the recipe at all. I know it's a good recipe. I'll leave it in the description. I'll be ready for it next time. I think me shaving my beard pissed the beer gods off. So I deserve this. If you made it this far, thank you for letting me waste your time. As always, choose to eat good, choose to drink good.